Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Welcome to Breaking Benchmarks. In this show, we check out the latest CPUs and GPUs on the market, benchmark them, and show you how to improve their out-of-the-box settings to maximize your system to break some benchmarks. Let's get started. Today's CPU and GPU of choice are the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X and the AMD Radeon RX 6950 XT. So basically the top of the line consumer products from AMD. I'm excited because I built this earlier this week with a lot of amazing parts. First off, the Thermaltake Core P3 case, the Corsair H150i AIO for cooling, 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RAM, one terabyte of Samsung 980 Pro for storage, and a Seasonic Focus 850 watt PSU. All the links will be in the description down below, but for now, let's get started with the first benchmark. Now we have installed the AMD Adrenaline software just to update everything, make sure that everything's up to date. We have not changed any of the settings. We are going to be using Cinebench R23 for the CPU and 3D Mark Time Spy for the GPU. Then we'll be testing out God of War as our game to see what kind of frames per second we can get with max settings. Let's go ahead and run the Cinebench R23. We're gonna start off with a single core and then we'll move on to multi-core. All right, so the score we got this time is 1625 for the single core. That's perfectly within the margin of error that we did last time, which is 1639. So very similar scores. Again, just out of the box settings, nothing has been changed yet, but pretty respectable for single core. Now we're gonna run the multi-core and see how that does. Okay, and so the score we got for the multi-core is going to be 24,964. So pretty good, of course. We knew that the multi-cores were rising really shines. So very good numbers overall, but these are the numbers beforehand, remember, and we will do all the settings to make these better. Now let's get to the next one, which is going to be 3D Mark. And now we're gonna be testing out the Radeon on this one, which again is the 6950 XT. Let me know in the comments section how much you think it's gonna run, and then we'll see if you're right. Frames per second that it's getting right now is like 114. Wow, it just jumped to 135. Okay, it looks like we're gonna get the results right now. 17,792, so it is legit. And again, this is out of the box, so we're gonna make this better. Let's go ahead and start with God of War now to test out the full CPU and GPU usage. For God of War, we are gonna put everything to ultra settings just to see how the frames per second will go. All right, so right now we're just gonna chop the tree down so it's gonna be more of like a semi-cut scene. So as soon as this part is done, we should be able to see the actual frame rates with gameplay. Look at that detail in the hand though. A beard. Again, these are with out of the box settings. It is a 4K display. We didn't expect like, you know, 120 or anything like that, but we should get more for sure. Very curious to see how this improves. So again, this is before we change everything and then after we change it, we should see a lot of difference. So let's go ahead and start with that now. First off, we're gonna start with some of the basics of Windows, which the first thing is you're just gonna wanna see if game mode is on. So mine happens to be on, but that's not always on by default. So it's something you just wanna make sure that you turn on. Then we're gonna go under power options. So for power options, we're gonna to go to additional power settings. Then we're going to make sure we're on high performance. And then you're gonna to go to change to advanced power settings. And again, you wanna make sure high performance is active. For this computer, we actually have ultimate performance. So I will set it to ultimate performance, but if you don't have that, the typical highest one is high performance. And then there's something special you're gonna to wanna to take a look at, and that is under PCI Express, you're gonna to wanna to make sure link state is off. That just makes sure that after a certain amount of time, it won't go in to a power saving mode. And with that, we're gonna actually go into the Radeon software right now. Just right click your desktop display and then go to AMD software, Adrenaline Edition. First, we're gonna to go to gaming. And under gaming, you're gonna to go to global graphics. So this is gonna be the default settings for every single thing you launch. 
whether it be editing software or gaming software. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on Radeon Super Resolution. Now this is really important for God of War and about 20 other games right now because they actually work on FSR 2.0. So that's the latest version of the Super Resolution. So we're going to turn that on and trust me, it will improve not only the frames per second, but the overall look. As good as God of War looked and as good as all these other ones looked, it's gonna even look that much better. For the sharpen effect, I actually bring this down to about 40. Typically, most people do it anywhere between 20 and 70. Everyone has a different opinion on it. I like to turn anti-lag on. Now, if you notice some stuttering or some issues, then turn it off, but that one is gonna be overall a good one that I would recommend turning on. Radeon Chill is something that you would only turn on for a laptop, just because it actually lowers the frames per second, basically not utilizing your full GPU. For the rest of everything here, I would just leave it off. And then for anti-alias, I would personally just leave it at a use application setting and multi-sampling for the actual anti-alias sampling. Then we're gonna go to a texture filter and we're going to turn it to performance. So that will, again, just making sure that we get the best performance. That's really what we're trying to do here. Then make sure surface format optimization is enabled. And then finally for tessellation mode, we want that AMD optimized. And you're all set from there. I will say that if you haven't uh, done this ever, you will want to reset your shader cache because this is just built up over time. So if you haven't done it like ever and you've played so many games for like months and months and months, you should probably do this at least once a year, if not every six months. So if you're a gamer out there, you know you haven't done this, do this, it'll see a big improvement after. And now we're gonna go to performance. So up here at the top, we're gonna go to performance. For here, we're gonna start off with the sample interval and we're gonna take it from two to 0 0.75. This will be a lot better off overall for our performance. And then for us, we are going to turn on the show metrics overlay because we want to see how the metrics are going when we're running everything. And then finally, we're going to move to preferences. And the main thing to know here is if you're not using it, turn it off because the more things run in the background, the more it slows down your overall performance in gaming. So for me, I am just going to have in-game overlay on and everything else turned off. So I don't need VR, I don't need toast notifications, I don't need advertisements, no one needs advertisements. You don't need effects and animations, all these things, we're gonna turn all that off so that it's running much faster. All right, so that helped out our GPU. Now to help out our CPU, we're going to go into the BIOS. Now how to do that is just restart your computer and start off by pressing either F2 or delete for most motherboards does depend on your manufacturer, so just double check if it doesn't go with either of those two buttons, but basically you will boot into a different screen instead of booting into Windows. All right, so now we're in the BIOS and let me tell you what I'm doing. So first off, I'm going to advanced mode, then going into settings, and then for my specific motherboard, I have to go into advanced again, then go into PCI or PCIe. And from here, you want to enable bar support. So that is resize bar support. You want that to be enabled. And you also want above 4G memory to be enabled as well. So once those two are enabled, it will help out with what's called SAM. That means smart access memory between the CPU and the GPU. After that is done, then we're just gonna go to save and exit. And then for me, I have to click save changes and reboot. And now we're restarting again and we will test everything out once again. All right, so now let's see how everything runs again. Now the CPU will probably be the least changed. The GPU should be significantly changed and then the gaming experience should be much, much better. With the CPU, we're gonna start off with the single core, which I don't expect to see as much change as compared to the multi-core, but let's go ahead and see how it runs on Cinebench R23. So first off, I will just say this AIO is really, really working. The fans are starting to slow down a little bit now, but I did not hear them anywhere near that kind of sound earlier. So they're working a lot harder to keep this CPU cool right now. 
in the multi-core, we did go up. We went from 24,000 to now 25,500. So pretty nice bump up there in terms of our CPU. Now in terms of the single core though, I think we got throttled. Uh, that's the only explanation because it went lower. So we went from 14 to 12. So that to me signifies that we've got throttled, which again is why I think the AIO started working a lot harder in the multi-core to make sure that it didn't get throttled yet again. But you can see we are going at 3.88 Hertz compared to what we were at before, which was 3.4 Hertz. So very happy about that. All right, now let's check out to see how our GPU is doing. See those fans start moving, yep. I can already tell it's smoother. The way she's walking is just already, like it's running faster. Ooh, yeah, starting off at 120. Before it was like starting off at 90. You can just see it, the butterflies, the way they're moving, like everything's just so much faster. Staying at 130, 140, 150, 160. And you really can just like have a gaming computer for a heater. It's like toasty here, man. It's like toasty. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Again, we had a bump up. It went from 17,000 to over 18,000 now. Pretty handily too, 18,400. So pretty good. GPU scored a lot. CPU was a little overheated. So I'm pretty sure it could have even scored better if we had taken more time from it. But all in all, definitely a great performance. And you can see if you were playing like Battlefield 5 at 440p, you would get 190 frames per second plus. So yeah, definitely running legitly. So now let's go ahead and check out our game. We're gonna go into settings and graphics are on set to ultra, but I did wanna show you guys one thing that's now different in our display. We now have AMD FSR 2.0 ultra performance. We actually realized that V-Sync was on and this monitor doesn't support V-Sync. Now that it's turned off though, we are getting a smooth 120 frames per second at 4K, all ultra settings. So it does look definitely really good, much better. No stuttering like we had earlier when it was 30 FPS. So now you can really see just everything move. So yeah, I can say it was a success in terms of overall performance both benchmarks went up and again we had a much faster and better quality gameplay changing all the settings from out of the box to how they're supposed to be really does help improve the overall usability and performance of these both benchmarks went up and the gameplay footage is now at 120 frames per second so yeah i think it's definitely going to improve but we are still going to do another video upcoming soon where we're gonna overclock it and get even crazier specs and speeds. So make sure to stay tuned for that and subscribe. Thank you as always so much for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy.